Hello everybody, this is Nathan and this is my take. And first of all, I want to say, with the football season finished, I'm probably not going to be making a lot of these videos. I know the NFL is still going on, the Super Bowl is coming up. By the way, amazing game between the Packers and Seahawks. Not so amazing between New England and the Colts. That one bored me to tears. But me not really having a dog in the NFL, it just doesn't interest me as much. I've, I've liked Green Bay since I was a kid, but I can't really say I'm a fan. And besides that, I, I'm not really a fan of any NFL team. So the NFL has never kept my interest. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, football, sadly, is over. And with that, with that being the case, I'm not going to be making a lot of videos. I don't really follow recruiting all that much. Simply because I hate following recruits who end up not panning out on the team and or, you know, not following recruits like low end recruits like <clears throat> Amir Abdullah, who was, I think, the, the third best running back in the recruiting class. He came in and he came in to be a star. All right, I, I, I hate following recruiting. I don't have the patience to follow recruiting. To me, it's all about the, the uh, what goes on on the field and the recruiting. It just doesn't interest me too much. So, that said, the topic of today's video is what needs to change at Nebraska in order for this program to turn a corner and become successful. What is it that Mike Riley needs to do in order to turn this program around? And I think the most important thing that Mike Riley is going to need to do is change the attitude at this program. Bo Pelini for seven years had this kind of us against the world mentality that kind of ran through the lifeblood of this program for the duration of his tenure here. But and and, and as as much as that worked at the beginning, it kind of wore off as time went by. You know that that very those first two years I think worked it worked fantastically. Especially in 2009, when he got that defense working at the highest level it's been since the 90s. I mean, that was an incredible defense. But, unfortunately, those were all Bill Callahan's recruits playing those two years. So, he took talent recruited by the previous coach and gave them a new attitude, gave them a new edge that they needed to win. But... As time went on, it seemed to me that the us against the world meme really consisted of Bo Pelini at the team versus everyone else. The us didn't include the fan base. It didn't include the greater Husker family, which I think ultimately doomed Pelini in more ways than one. It kind of set him against, it kind of set a lot of the fans against him. It wasn't just his brash behavior on the field. It's his, it was his prickly nature when answering questions, when addressing the media, when addressing fans. He never, it, it was, he was never open about what was going on. He always wanted to shut people out of the program instead of embracing the greater Husker Nation in a way that I think Husker coaches in the past have, and, and frankly should. I, I think that this really, it, and in the end it set the players, they, they had this idea that it was them against everybody. That's not the case though. The, the, the Husker fans are not against their team. We have never been against our team. We love our team. We love our players. We love our coaches. We always have. We always will. Unless you give us a reason not to. And Bo Pelini, it seemed, gave the Husker Nation a lot of reasons not to. And I, and I think when you give the, your team this us against the world mentality, and that's all you're building on, and, that, and that's all you're building on week after week, year after year, game after game, that, then problems start to set in. You can't really build a culture based entirely on, well, we're right and everyone else is the enemy. You can't do that. At, at some point, you need to embrace the fan base. You need to embrace the university. You need to build a, a culture well, yes, it is us against the world, but the us is not just the players and coaches on the teams, but the entire fan base against the rest of the world. That's fine. 
But we need to be included. We want to be included. At the end of the day, you know, this the fan base is the number one asset that the University of Nebraska has. Without the fans, you don't have the resources to spend on facilities, on coaches, on staff. You don't have any of that. This fan base is the most important aspect in making sure that the University of Nebraska football program is successful in the future. And you have to embrace that. You don't need to fight it. There's no point in fighting it. See, when you fight it, you end up like Bo Pelini did in his recorder gate, or however, whatever you want to call them, scandals. You know, when, when he was caught saying F the fans after coming back to beat Ohio State, and when he let his true feelings be known in his farewell speech to the players. See, when you build walls between yourself and and the rest of the fa- and the fan base, you, you're setting yourself up for failure. It, it, that's just the plain and simple fact. You're setting yourself up for failure. You know, it, it's just not healthy for the overall culture. So that's one thing that Mike Riley needs to do. And I think so far he's doing a fantastic job doing it. He, he's letting the fan base know what's going on. He's reaching out to recruits via social media, via Twitter and Facebook. He's reaching out to the fan base and letting us know what's going on. And his overall attitude is a lot better. It's a lot open. He's genuinely happy to be here. That's the great thing about Mike Riley. It's one thing about having a coach that's not familiar with the program is that he gets... He, it's, he sometimes seems like a kid seeing something amazing for the first time, you know? Like, he gets to Lincoln, he's like, wow, look at all this. Look at these facilities, look at the stadium, look at all these people here. Because he never had that in Corvallis. Corvallis, I mean, I've never been, so I'm not going to pretend to know, but I would imagine that the atmosphere around Oregon State isn't nearly as passionate as it is around Lincoln. So I think the culture change, first and foremost, is what Mike Riley is going to need to do in order to change this program and get it headed in the right direction. And I think he's doing a very good job doing that. Attitude needs to change, first and foremost, before anything else can happen. Mike Riley is a very even-keeled guy. He... He's a lovable dude. I just love hearing him in press conferences. I love seeing his tweets. I, the guy has won me over, but he's going to have to win on the field in order to cement, him, cement this choice as a positive one. And the first step to doing that is establishing a constructive, positive culture. And to do that, you need to flush out the old, us-against-the-world, angry culture that Bo Pelini instilled. That's what I think. That's, I think that's the first and foremost what he has to do. All right, that's it for now. I am Nathan, and I am the Angry Husker. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, have a good one.